Hello again, everybody. Dr. Joe Vitale here with another episode of Zero Limits Living. And I want to ask you a question. How do you brand your business? How do you separate yourself from the competition, from the crowd? We all know you've got somebody out there who's competing with you. How do you double your income? Despite what's going on in the world, whether it's COVID, a pandemic, or any number of things that can serve us at any time, how do you make yourself immune from that? How do you double your income no matter what's going on in the world? Another question, how do you recreate yourself when you are in your senior years? So whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're starting a business, whether you got a business going, this particular episode is going to answer a lot of questions. And my promise to you every week is to bring you inspiration and information to help you live a zero limits life. Wow. Now, to do that, <laughs> I have a guest who's already announced himself with a wow. That's Raymond Aaron. And let me say a couple of things about Raymond Aaron here, because I hand selected this guy early. I wanted him on this show and I wanted him for a couple of very uh, pro profound reasons. First of all, this man has delivered 5,000 speeches in five continents for over 40 years. That alone ought to make you stand up and give him a standing ovation. He's the author of Brace Yourself, 146 books. Now, people look at me, and for the longest time when I, they heard I wrote 80 books, they were impressed. Well, now I feel like a loser. Now I feel like a slacker. I've written 80 books. He's doubled that, or he's about to double that. This is, this is Raymond. And some of his books are things like uh, Branding Small Business for Dummies, Double Your Income, Doing What You Love. He's also written the New York Times bestseller, Chicken Soup for the Parent's Soul, and the Canadian bestseller, Chicken Soup for the Canadian Soul. And I also want to tell you, this guy does some amazing things. When I first met him, and I'm not sure he even remembers this, we met at a meeting. We're both members of the Transformational Leadership Council. And he shook my hand and he handed me a disc. And it was a rare DVD that gave the entire story of how he went on a polar race expedition. Now, a polar race, I didn't even know what that was, but you can imagine this. This man went for an entire month going across, I think it's 350 miles, pulling a sled, dodging polar bears and ice caps to go to the North Pole. This is how I met the man. And I've been, I've been friends with him. We've helped each other with different things throughout the years. Uh, I've wanted to pick his brains because he's got so much experience, so much knowledge, so much wisdom, so much information that he's bound to inspire everybody, including me. So, Raymond, thank you for being here. Oh, my gosh. I haven't been introduced so well since the day my introducer didn't show up and I had to do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. That's a high compliment right there. But you deserve everything. Those are all facts. And there's more to it than that. I don't even know where to begin with you, but I'm going to begin. So I guess I do know with the, the polar race, because that was my introduction to you. And I watched the DVD. In fact, later on, when I saw you again at another meeting, I asked for another copy of it. And you said, I only made a handful to give out to family and friends. And that was it. Why did you do the polar race? And what was, what was your age when you decided to do it? At age 60, a wonderful lady I know who had a world record for rowing across the Atlantic Ocean, the oldest woman ever to row across the Atlantic Ocean. I was in the Bahamas when she arrived. I just happened to be in the Bahamas. And she, she took a rowboat from Africa to Bahamas. And I just happened to be there. Wow. And I met her. And I've been intrigued by her ever since. And later she called me and said, how would you like to tie for last crossing another ocean? And I said, sure, which one? She said, the Arctic Ocean when it's frozen, we're gonna race to the North Pole together. And we did, we did. When you, I was 60 years old when I agreed to do it. And I trained for two years, Joe, one hour to 10 hours a day for two years, every day. I just did the most incredible things every day because every day I said, what if I don't exercise enough today and don't make it to the North Pole? And so one day I did 1,000 flights of stairs. 
There's no building that tall. I went to downtown. There's an 80 story building. I went up and down at whatever it was six times up and down, up and down. No, 16 times. I can't even think of it. Right. But I did a thousand flights of stairs. It took nine hours and 51 minutes. Yeah. This I is just nonstop. I was just, <laughs> I was just a bear for an entire year. I was so ripped. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, there's so many questions I want to ask you, and I, and, I, and I have to role play what I think the viewers would ask you. One, one is, why did you say yes? Why did you oh, say yes I'm so a zero limits. I'm a zero limits guy. I mean, when I was running marathons, my, one of my marathon buddies said, marathoning, that's nothing. You should run an ultra marathon. I said, what's that? He said, it's 100 kilometers. And for my American viewers, that's 62 miles. I said, 62 miles, 26 is enough. He says, nah. And so I trained for several months and I entered that race. I got to the starting line at noon, the gun went off and I finished after 12 and a half hours, half past midnight, nonstop. I'm just crazy. And that was at age uh, 50. Okay, so you're age 60 when you decided to do the polar race. You're training for two years. Another big question that I think people would have, and I definitely have it, is what were you doing for your work during that time? If you're working out one to 10 hours a day, how are you getting your job done? The, what My rule is that anything I want is infinitely expandable. There's no such thing as I don't have time. Oh, you that's take good. somebody like Steve Jobs who ran – two giant businesses, Pixar and Apple. You take somebody like Elon Musk, who's running 10 disruptive businesses. There's never no time. I believe that everything is infinitely expandable. Everything. I have an infinite amount of time, an infinite amount of energy. It's, um, it's Brian Tracy's birthday today, and I just called him to wish him happy birthday. And he said, you know what? You and I are going to live forever. I said, nope, we're not going to live forever. I'm going to live in abundant health till age 120 and die on stage. And you know what he said to me? I want to be in the audience that day. <laughs> <laughs> that is, so, pro did you always think this way? Raymond, did you always think this way about abundance, about time? Did you always feel that way? No, up to age 39, I was a 39 year old life loser. I was $100,000 in debt. My second wife had just divorced me. My boss had just fired me. I was depressed. I didn't know what to do. Unemployed, sad. I didn't know what to do. And my parents took me to Mexico. Uh, I, I agreed because I didn't have any money and they were going to pay for it. And when I was there, sitting on top of the Mayan rune called Chichen Itza, it's a pyramid shaped Mayan rune, I got a message saying, Raymond, you're a teacher. And I said, teacher, I thought teacher meant high school mathematics teacher because I graduated as a physicist. And I didn't want to be a high school mathematics teacher, but I actually uh, started teaching real estate and my wealth expanded and my fame expanded. And then I stopped that after 12 years because I got another message saying I should teach life. And then I started teaching a goal attainment course that Jack Canfield says is the best in the world. Then I started teaching spirituality. It's not till I found my calling, Joe. It's not till I found my calling at age 39 that life soared. I had infinite energy, infinite time. I do so much. I love it. And in the middle of the lockdown, when everybody was complaining and moaning, I said, no way, man, this is going to be the best experience ever. And I did some research and I found out that the easiest time to make money, the easiest time to be rich and to be famous and help lots of people is in the midst of chaos. And mm. if you look, if you look at the Dow Jones industrial index of the 30 most important stocks in the New York Stock Exchange, almost half of them started during the Great Depression, a hundred years ago, during the Great Depression. The Great Depression was even more disruptive than the lockdown. This is the opportunity. Now is the time. You see, when things are normal, then it's hard to break in. But when there's gigantic disruption, there's holes in the marketplace everywhere. Huge opportunities. Oh, Raymond, you are just electrifying me. And I imagine you're electrifying everybody that's watching you. Listen, you, you've said so many different things already. And one of the things I want to pinpoint, though, is you you received a message that told you to be a teacher. Where did that message come from? You can say God, you can say Allah, you can say Moses, Jesus, you call it whatever you like. But I was sitting on the top of that monument and I got a statement inside my head, absolutely clear that said, Raymond, you're a teacher. That's it. I had. How can, we, how can we all get messages like that? 
to tell the viewers, how do you prep yourself to receive something of that sort? There, there are certain things, they're called postulates. And there are certain things that you do in the physical universe that injure your possibility of receiving postulates. And there are certain things you do that encourage the receipt of them. So for example, there's a concept called dirty hands. And dirty hands means anything that you do, no matter how tiny, that you're not proud of, or you're a little embarrassed about. Maybe you said something and it was a tiny bit of an exaggeration, even though unintended, it was just a little overstated. And usually you say, oh, it's okay, who cares? They'll never, they don't even care. But that's dirty hands. And it's way, way south of the Christian concept of sin. Sin means you have to like have an affair or murder somebody or stab somebody. But dirty hands is anything that bothers you. One day I took my hand out of my pocket as I was walking down the street and a little fluff of nothing came out of my pocket. And I started debating with myself, Raymond, you just littered. Littered, it's white on a white sidewalk and the next rain, no one will see it. And I finally said, it's dirty hands. And I went back and I found that darn little tiny piece of lint and picked it up and put it in the trash can. And I'm not saying I'm wonderful. That was not the point. The point is anything that bothers you is dirty hands. And the more dirty hands you have, the more you will not get messages. That's huge. I mean, I'm, my breath is taken away with that. I've never even heard the concept of dirty hands before, and I've been around the block a bit. You so that, that, that alone is cool. What about the opposite of it? If there is dirty hands, is there something that clean helps hands. you clean your hands? Yeah, clean hands. There's, there's about eight things that encourage postulates to come true. There's about eight things that discourage. One, for example, is any drug. Even legitimate legal prescription drugs, they still cut connection to spirit. Now, I have high blood pressure and I take high blood pressure medication. So I choose to cut my connection with spirit a bit so that I have lower blood pressure. So I'm not saying you never get any messages. It's just, it's cumulative. It's a gradient. So any alcohol cuts connection, any street drugs, any tobacco, they all cut connection, but it's a gradient. It's not like you have one little sip of a of schnapps and you can never get a message again. Gotcha. So there's things that I do to encourage and there's things that I do, things that I have stopped doing that discourage and I get wonderful messages from spirit. Wonderful. And do and you meditate my, or make time for the silence or gratitude or something to that effect? I don't meditate. I, I know okay. that a lot of your viewers do and that you encourage it. And I, I just don't. I just, I just mess. Like, I'll tell you, sometimes they're hilarious. I was at a spiritual workshop. And at lunch, we were all walking across the parking lot of the hotel to go into the freestanding restaurant on the other side of the parking lot. And I ran up to the leader and I said, look, I've got this guy that works for me as an outside consultant. His name is Peter Sachs. And he's not doing a great job, but he's not doing as bad a job that I should fire him, but he's not doing a great job that he gets any commendations. He's just average. And I don't like average around me, but I don't know what to do. And at that second, we'd suddenly arrived at the restaurant and it had two doors. Over one door, it said dining room. And over the other door is what you and I would think would be the word takeout. Because one door you go in to sit down, the other door you go in, you order something. But in that part of Florida, takeout's not called takeout. It's called, wait till you hear this. You remember the person I was thinking of was Peter Sachs, right? Over the door, it said Sachs to go. <laughs> <laughs> not really. God organized that decades ago when someone built that <clears throat> building that I would ask my coach <clears throat> right in front of that door. Like, Really? Yeah. And I get miracles like that all the time. It's so hilarious. I love it. I love it. I tell a story in my book, The Attractor Factor, of considering leaving a job that I actually hated. I was crying going to work and crying going home. And I always passed the street that I didn't pay any attention to until one day I looked up and I really clearly saw the, it's one word and it's pronounced quitman. But I saw it as quit, man. <laughs> And it, fi <laughs> it finally made sense. It was like, oh, yeah, quit, man. But the sign's been there all this time. Finally, the moment and me and everything that was going on in the world all said, no, that's not quitman. That's quit, man. 
I, there's so many things I can talk to you about, and I'm already deeply fascinated with you and what you do. And I know you do coaching. I know you charge money for everything. So I'm really grateful that you've made this time for me and everybody watching Zero Limits Living. Thank you for that. Going back to the polar race there, and that's a month. You were gone for a month. Tell me a couple yes. things you learned from either the preparation or or for a 30-day trip of pulling a sled. I mean, I saw that video and I was getting cold right. watching you with yeah. your toes freezing. <laughs> it's not a trip and it's not an expedition. It was a race, which is very, very different. And I was racing on the ice. It was in, um, it was in April because before April is total darkness and mm. after April is open water. You either make it in April or you don't. And one of the things I noticed is that your viewers or you or anyone thinks they live in a city, but they don't. They live in a tiny little slice of that city of the very few restaurants and roads that they use and they ignore the rest. Also, if the temperature is slightly above 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which is room temperature, they don't say it's warm. They go right to death and say, I'm boiling. And if it's 71 degrees Fahrenheit, they go right to death and say they're freezing. Yeah. Well, man, I was racing at minus 40 degrees, minus 40 degrees, hauling a hundred pound sled, dodging polar bears, learning. I, and I had to take courses. Are you ready for this? I had to take pooping and peeing courses. They, Because, I mean, you and I, if if... If we take an extra 10 minutes to poop, who cares? But man, you don't want to have any skin exposed for any, any extra seconds out there. We had to learn how to pee. We had to learn how to poop. And I learned how to live in a wide range of situations, whereas most people live in the tiniest, tiniest range. And when they're out of it by just like a quarter of a, an inch, they, they think they're dying. And is this why you're in a log cabin now? Oh, man, in the middle of the, the lockdown. So it was November of last year. November, no, November of 2019. No, November of 2020. November of 2020, I sold every house I owned in a city because I've been a, a city guy. I'm 77. I've been a city guy, downtown city guy all my life. I said, to heck with this. I don't want the lockdown. I don't want the noise. I don't want the news. I don't want to hear people moaning. It's over. And I bought this luxury log cabin, this gorgeous log cabin. It's three stories. I have an indoor sauna, an outdoor hot tub. I have my own waterfall, my own river, deer come by. And I've got these gentle little muskrats. They're, they're Canadian. They're so polite. They come out of the river. They come up to my apple tree. And in the fall, the apples fall down and they pick up an apple and they walk back to the river to wash the apple before they eat it. <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh yeah, I know God, people Canadians that don't do so that. So that's, <laughs> that's amazing. So you mentioned you're 77 years old and I know that you recreated yourself fairly recently during the lockdown and at age 77, you, you did yeah. something I to did, adapt. Yeah. And I think you also made some sort of life decision or solve the life problem. In, in uh, October 28th of last year, October 28th, Mark Zuckerberg announced that he's changing the name of Facebook to Meta. Mm -hmm. I said, Meta? That was Meta. And so I started studying it. 28, 29, 30, 31, I studied and studied and studied, and I was dazzled. I was dazzled by how this is going to take over the future. I realized that Mark Zuckerberg was absolutely right. It is the future, and nobody knows it's coming. And so on November 1st, three days after I started studying, I had so much wisdom that I launched a YouTube channel called Meta Man Rocks. Meta Man Rocks. So you can just go to YouTube and uh, under the search put Meta Man Rocks and you'll see my channel. And every single day I do a 15 minute video on a different coin in the in the cryptoverse or on the metaverse. Every single day I've, I'm learning so much. I'm studying so much. And I just want to reveal it all. There's no charge to it. I just do it for fun. It takes several hours a day and I, I'm just I'm just overjoyed. I'm just overjoyed that I have this new thing that I do that I didn't even know about two months ago. And, and also, you're doing it. You're doing it online. You're doing it at home. You can yeah, do it I'm in a, a YouTuber. lockdown. 
yes, I, I, I study a different aspect of the of crypto and I make a video every single day. It's been two months now. I've got 60 videos up. I've got almost a hundred thousand views. I can't even, where do they come from? I don't know where they come from, but I'm providing a service and people like it. Meta man rocks. I and love also, it. I didn't know how my life would end. I, I didn't know. I, I mean, I love traveling. I love what I'm doing, but I, I realized that when the lockdown came, that it wasn't true that I was a professional speaker because when I got to um, when I got an invitation to go to say Singapore or Reykjavik, Iceland or Perth, Australia, and they would pay me so much, they paid me hundreds of thousands of dollars. It was worth it to pay business class to go all the way there. You have to fly; it takes two days to get there, and then a day to rest, and then the ninety minute speech, and then you have to go all the way back. I realized during the lockdown that I wasn't a professional speaker. I was a professional traveler. I would travel for a week and speak for an hour and a half. And so now, because of the lockdown, I'm actually a true professional speaker now. There's no travel. I used to step onto an airplane one and a half times a week for 40 years. And now I haven't seen an airport in two years. And screw all my frequent flyer points. I hate them now. Oh my God, life is so fun. There, it's so different. And this is such an opportunity. Like, I'm glad that I'm being coached. I, I never go without a coach. And I'm glad that I coach other people because the success stories are startling. Here's one, Bill. Let me give you an example, Bill. Yeah, Bill tell was us. the largest, but had the largest gym in all of Los Angeles. And he had 1,000 pieces of equipment. They had a gigantic and he was paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in rent, hundreds of thousands in uh, salaries for all the staff. And then the lockdown came and his revenue went to zero. So all of a sudden his revenue is zero. But even before that, he had the problem that he was at his gym 14 hours a day, seven days a week. He never saw his wife, never saw his kids growing up. And he didn't know how it would end. And so, so listen to the coaching advice. It, what he did was he... He completely pivoted and he called one of his clients and said, uh, Joe, I understand. I, I remember that you'd like the stair climber. I've disinfected it. I put it on a truck. It's on its way to his, your home. If you say yes, $99 a month and you've got an industrial strength equipment right in your home. If you say no, I'll send it to someone else who wants it. And everyone he called, he called a thousand people. They all said yes. He now makes a thousand times 99, $100,000 a month with zero overhead. When his lease came up, he said, screw you landlord. He has no staff. He has no insurance. He has no heating. He has nothing. It's gone. He runs his business from his cell phone in his bed or on the beach. He now plays with his wife all day long. He sees his kids growing up. And he's so he's like he's retired, but he's making more money. And it's only because of the lockdown. Like, Joe, you and I get invited all over the world to give speeches. Never in all our years. I've been on stage 40 years. You've been roughly the same amount of time. If we got an engagement and some, no matter how far away, we always say yes, because they pay us so much. Now I'm going to say, excuse me, you want to pay me 300,000? Yeah. How about 150 and I'll do it by Zoom? Screw you. <laughs> like I would have never said that before. And no host would have ever agreed before. Wow. But now I bet you they'll agree. This when is I'm so weird. In front of 10,000 people, they're not looking at me. I'm a quarter of an inch tall on stage if there's 10,000 people. They're looking at the big giant screens. Well, if they're looking at the big giant screens, I might as well be at home. <laughs> Raymond, you are such a thunderbolt. I, I, I had no idea that you would be so explosive in this interview here with so much information and so much energy. One of the most beautiful things that you're giving all the viewers is is an alternative because many of them are still sitting there going, what do I do? I'm in lockdown. I can't go to work or I purposely quit my job or any number of scenarios. And you're, you're giving them a massive pivotal mental transformation. Now, how can we help them make that easier? The stories help them. The energy helps them. This information helps them. But is there a tip or two that comes to mind from your experience? First of all, let me give them something more than a tip. Let me, I'm, what I'm going to do, Joe, we've been like, there's 120 of the top transformational leaders in the world in Transformational Leadership Council. But you and I connected. Like, I really like you. I don't, there's some people I don't even know in, in Transformational Leadership Council. Some people I know the name of, but 
I really connect with you and I really like you. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to do something. I'm going to yank my three best coaches off their paid work and give them to the viewers at no okay. charge. No, there's, there's no hidden agenda, no charge. And I'm, I've set up a link and they can just go to the link, choose a half hour time slot and they'll be contacted and they'll get a half hour coaching at no charge. The very same coaching from the very same coaches that clients of mine pay a very large amount of money for just because I love you. And therefore by indirect, by reflected limelight, I love your viewers and want to. And so here it is. It's probably on the screen right now. Aaron.com slash Joe. Aaron.com <laughs> slash Joe. And you better spell Aaron right. A-A-R-O-N. I'm sure you know how to spell Joe correctly. <laughs> that is an amazing gift. You are incredibly generous. Uh, my latest book is called Karmic Marketing. And Karmic oh. Marketing is the whole idea about giving, giving away your services, giving away time, giving away money, giving away what you would otherwise charge for, knowing that in some way, shape, or form, it's got to come back to you. That's what you just offered is a karmic marketing maneuver. And I am so impressed with that and so grateful for that. Thank you. And also, I wanted to make sure people spell your name right, because I went on Wikipedia earlier to look up Raymond Aaron. And and there is a French philosopher yes. that I thought was you, but he's gone and he doesn't look like you anyway, or he didn't look like you. <laughs> right. There's also Hank Aaron of a different skin color. Yeah, but he's all famous, all famous people. Yeah, I've got lots of famous Aaron's around me. Well, we're also in a brand new year here. It was it's renew you in 2022. Do you believe in resolutions or do you have an alternative to setting resolutions for a new year? The problem with resolutions is that they're usually made on December 31st when people are drunk. And the, the number one most common resolution is weight loss. And yeah. actually, according to Google, the average duration of a weight loss New Year's resolution is 36 hours. That means, Joe, noon January 2nd, a calorie comes along, they're dead. Wow. And so I teach a very different way of setting goals because a resolution or a typical goal is in the dreaded binary way. Like I will earn a million dollars this year. If they earn a million, they feel happy. If they don't earn a million, they feel terrible. And I don't want my clients to do anything that has them even the tiniest possibility of feeling terrible. And so I've created a new, completely revolutionary way of setting a goal. And it's called MTO, MTO, Minimum Target Outrageous. So instead of setting a goal, which you may get or not get, and therefore feel good or feel bad, you set a minimum. The definition of minimum is what you can be counted on to do based on your past performance. So let's say you've got a messy, uh, messy closet. Then the minimum might be to take four shirts to the dry cleaner. And the target might be to take out uh, 10 shirts or 10 items of clothing to give to Goodwill. And the outrageous might be to empty every single thing out of the closet, give away what you don't want, give to the dry cleaners what needs to be mended or cleaned, and put back only what you actually wear. So that's minimum target outrageous. In that way, because the minimum is defined as what you can be expected to do, can be counted on to do based on your past performance, you always hit the minimum and feel good. But right now, the closet is so daunting that you actually do nothing. So when you achieve your minimum, the blessing is that you feel better and you've rehabilitated your ability to achieve your closet goal. And that means the next month when you do your MTO, the M is bigger because you did the M last month. So the the M next month might be your target from this month. And so you get better and better. You feel better and better. And the shocking, the unbelievably shocking thing is that many times my clients hit the outrageous. Many times. Mm. Mm. And it, it totally startles them. I love it. That is a brand new concept I hadn't heard before. And I I'll, will be using that myself. Now, I know so one let, of your books was just, on doubling. Let me just give an example because I started it. Uh, I said, I'm okay. going to earn a million dollars in 2022. Okay. So you and I don't know if that's his minimum or his outrageous. So let's say it's his outrageous. And let's say he earns $200,000 this year. So his minimum would be 200000 His target might be 400000 And his outrageous might be a million. So if next year he earns 200000 he achieved his minimum. 
and he feels good. I love it. I love it. Great explanation. Now, in the introduction, I was reading some of the titles that you have written, and I had asked people, would they like to double their income? Can you give a tip or two on how to double their salary or double their income? And of course, we're talking to a broad audience here, so you can't be too specific, but maybe a mindset, maybe a takeaway, maybe a to-do, maybe a book to read, something that you would offer to them. Well, first of all, and I hope this is a good piece of advice. I hope it's not too obvious because I, I don't think it's obvious. When I look around, I, I don't see that it's obvious at all. Most people are doing what they don't enjoy. They just don't like it. All the way from they don't like it to it's really like they hate it. But mm -hmm. hopefully there's not that many people in that category. Most people are not inspired by their job. And I say, well, then quit and do something you love. And they say, are you kidding? If I do something I love, I'll have to take a pay cut. And I say to them, name any wildly famous, no, wildly high income person. And you'll notice they love what they do. I guarantee you Brad Pitt loves what he does. I guarantee you Meryl Streep loves what she does. Meryl Streep, I, I, I bet you that Elon Musk loves what he does. Everyone who's wildly, wildly high income loves what they do. They love it. And yet broke people who hate their job think they have to take a pay cut to do what they love. And what should they do? How do you get them to get past that? How do you get around that? The Dalai Lama, like, if you want to look good, quote the Dalai Lama. That's one of my rules. The Dalai Lama said, the way to happiness is to do more of what you love and less of what you don't love. Yeah. That's it. So just open your eyes and notice what you love doing. Notice what you typically are thrown to do. Notice, like, I just, I just am thrown to teach. And so... I should be on stage teaching and every single person out there who's earning less than they deserve and who's doing a job that they don't like loves certain things. And, and I get silly comments. People say, well, I like sleeping in. How do I make money at that? Like people are quite quick to say dumb things to me, but it's because they're embarrassed because they're not earning as much as they should. And so I say, take it seriously. Notice what you love. What do you love to do? Anything that you love to do. I love to study. The only reason I can be a great teacher is because I'm a great student. And so I started studying the metaverse in the last dying days of October last year. And suddenly I'm now a YouTuber and with almost 100,000 views. How did that happen? I noticed what I loved and I started doing it. Absolutely beautiful. And I totally agree with that. Do what you love. And what about branding? I know another one of your books is on branding a small business. What's a tip or two there to get people thinking in terms of branding and separating themselves from the competition and from the crowd? Yes, you, if you, you'll you drown in the sea of sameness. You need yeah. to get yourself out of the sea of sameness, climb up onto the island of individuality so that you can float for the rest of your life down the river of relevant differentiation. Mm -hmm. I, for example, one of my clients is a dentist and he said to me, I've tried bench ads. I've handed out flyers in the area and I can't get anyone to use my services. My chair is empty half the day. And I said, well, screw all your advertising. It's not going to do you any good. He said, why? I said, because you're just a dentist. You're just a dentist. Why should they switch from their a dentist to you? You're just a dentist. There's no reason to switch. And he said, well, I'm just an average dentist. I'm nothing special. I'm not a specialist. I'm just an average dentist. I said, you're average because you're not branded. Branding sets you apart even if you're not special. That's what's so unbelievable about branding. Branding sets you apart even if you're not special. And so I branded him as the smiling dentist. And he said, does that mean I smile more than other dentists? Maybe. Does that mean my patients smile? Maybe. He branded himself as the smiling dentist. He wrote a book called The Smiling Dentist. I published it. He nice. now has more business that he can handle. He had to put up another chair in his office and hire another dentist so that he's got two, he's got two chairs full when he had one chair half full before, just because I branded him. He now has all his windows 
have pictures of his book, The Smiling Dentist. And when a new client comes in, a new patient comes in, they always say, you know, I was sitting in the park yakking with another lady and I was saying, I've got to take little Billy to the dentist and he hates going to the dentist. Well, my little Sally doesn't like, it doesn't hate going to the dentist. We go to the smiling dentist. Oh, I want to go to the smiling dentist. He's just an average dentist. He's not <laughs> special. He doesn't smile more than anybody else. He's just branded as the smiling dentist. And he's been branded with one word, yes. one word. Instead of being a dentist, he is a smiling dentist. The smiling dentist, yes. Or the smiling dentist. That is the beauty of it. And that's what I want people to, to get is that you're thinking in terms of being really big and colossal and outrageous. But actually, all you have to think is in terms of maybe a word that you yes. can add in front of what you already do. I absolutely love that. Uh, I have a random question for you, and I'm, you know, I've got you in the hot seat, and I can ask whatever the hell I want. So I want to ask about you doing planks, because you and I did an event a while back, and you had mentioned you did a plank, and I, I don't know if you do them on a regular basis or what, but I think you did it for ten minutes. And I did an eleven-minute plank. Most people 11, collapse no, after thirty seconds. Tell people was, what a plank uh, is in the off chance they don't okay. know what a plank a is. A plank is this uh, stationary exercise where your forearms touch the ground and your toes touch the ground. Otherwise, you're absolutely perfectly straight and you don't move a muscle. For and, 10 or 11 minutes. Well, I did it for 11 minutes a few years ago. And at any time, you can say anytime now, and I can pop down and do a two to five minute plank at any time. And, and the what amazing is the... thing, it, it's all in your mind. It's not strength. It's just in your mind. Yeah, well, I would imagine that it's uh, all in your mind, because I know the times that I've tried to do a plank without a whole lot of commitment behind it, I barely made a minute. And mostly because my mind yes. was talking me out of it. So, But think, think right. about it. After you give up and you collapse on the ground, go, ah, ah, at, like one second later, nothing hurts. Yeah. Right? You're not injured. So you just gave up. Your muscles didn't give up. Give up. You gave up. And what are the what's the benefit or benefits of doing planks? Nothing. There's no benefit. It's the silliest exercise. There's no benefit at all. You can't get paid for it. Nobody wants it. Nobody cares. It's just fun. I, I like getting up doing a five minute plank in the morning. I just love it. Uh, I thought that it helped improve some posture, that it built some muscles, that it did some sort of stabilizing. Is that all incorrect or incomplete? Uh, that is correct. That is correct. But that's not why I do it. I do, you do it just it because you... just because it's screwy. I do things that are screwy. I, at age 40, I decided to ride a unicycle and I hired a coach and he said, you can never ride a unicycle at age 40. Your muscles will never be able to generate the fast twitch that you need. And I spent every evening and every weekend for a year before I finally did it. So why do I ride a unicycle? It has no cargo carrying capacity. You can't go up a hill or down a hill. <laughs> if there's an ant that you roll over, you'll fall off. It just but I love doing it. I do all kinds of crazy things. It keeps me young. It keeps me young. I'm so happy to be so young. Well, you're very exuberant. You're very healthy. You're very bubbly. Your energy is off the charts. What do you do that is goofy, silly for fun now? There in your log, three-story log cabin. I play a very um, difficult word game called Boggle on the internet. It's timed. You get a matrix of five by five letters and you have to find con uh, contiguous letters that make a word. And it's time, so it's very, very taxing. And it keeps my mind alive. And I play against like people who are really, really good. And it's, uh, it's very exciting. And I study the, uh, the crypto market every single day and make mm -hmm. a video every day. I, I have a podcast. So I find people, I interview them, or sometimes I just give a 10-minute insight of something I'm interested in. And I also teach many days and I, I give speeches all over the world. I'm, I'm busy, but I feel like I'm retired. Like I, because, because everything happens in this chair and I'm not traveling. It feels like I'm free. It, oh, it just, don't you dare Joe ever come to Toronto without telling me in advance and coming and staying here. That is a deal. Please. I like Toronto. I haven't been there in years. So yes, you, you've got it. I, so, I remember I, I invited you before, but it never happened. 
and I, I would love to get to know you more because you and I were roughly the same age and we're roughly the same, I don't know, fame and we're in the same industry and we love each other. So we need to connect. Uh, you got it. That is a deal. So in the last few minutes that we have here, we only have a few minutes left. Can you give some takeaways, some thoughts, some to do's, some resources, any, anything that comes to mind that you think is going to be relevant? These people that are watching are probably small business entrepreneurs. They're interested in zero limits living, which is the ideal of dropping the limitations. Again, they're probably all in the mind. How would you suggest uh, a few things that, that would help them? Okay, so number one, please accept my offer. You can see it on the screen now, aaron.com slash Joe. It's absolutely free half hour coaching. I'm taking my three best coaches to service you. Number two, I want you to notice what you really love, as silly as it might seem, as silly as it is, whatever it is that you love doing, and then figure out some way that you can either have that as your business or as part of your business. And another thing is the negative of that. Notice what you don't love and delegate it. Notice what you don't love and get rid of it. Because if you don't have an assistant, you are one. And therefore, all you deserve is to earn what your assistant deserves to earn. Oh, Raymond, you are priceless. <laughs> our, our friendship is priceless. What you've just shared is priceless priceless. I didn't know what you would be giving to us. And you gave everybody so much information and inspiration, which is what I promised to give everybody. Thank you. And thank you for your offer to help people. And everybody go grab his offer there, go and grab that 30 minutes of coaching. It is again, I'm going to use the word priceless because it, it really is. So for everybody watching, Dr. Joe Vitale here. I, I thank Lux Media Studios, Candace Barr, Chris for running the engineering. You can watch the show on YouTube. You can watch it on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, uh, the Lux TV app. Uh, and of course, every Friday, there's a new episode. You can go to zerolimitslivingtv.com and sign up to be notified for when the new episodes are posted. Some of these people that I bring in, I got to blow your socks off. And sometimes I'm not going to have a guest and I'll just sit here and rant and rave for 45 minutes about something that I think is really important. But the whole purpose, the whole goal is to help you. I'm doing this for free. My guests do not get paid. Raymond did not get paid. He's doing this out of the goodness of his heart. We're doing this to help you. No matter who you are, no matter what's going on, where you are, what you think your challenges are, you can have a zero limits life. Expect miracles. Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radicals, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASET. NASET increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.